Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Mate. With this video, we are starting up with the bonding agents. In this video, particularly, we will be discussing about adhesion and enamel bonding. Let's get started. So, what are basically bonding agents? Bonding agents, they help in the adhesion of composite resin to the tooth structure. So what is adhesion? Adhesion means combination or attachment of two different structures together. So in adhesion, two different structures, they combine together. Whereas what is cohesion? Cohesion means when two similar molecules, they combine together, that is cohesion. So attraction between different molecules, adhesion. Attraction between similar molecules is cohesion. So what are the different types of adhesion? Adhesion could be classified into chemical, mechanical or a combination of both the types. The chemical type of adhesion occurs at molecular level when there is a transfer of electron or there is attraction between the molecules. So in the chemical adhesion, some transfer of electrons take place and because of that, there is attraction between the molecules. The chemical type of adhesion could be divided into primary and secondary. The primary chemical adhesion is further divided into first the ionic bond. In the ionic bond, there is direct transfer of electron from one atom to another. For example, the formation of salt. There is an electron transfer from the sodium ion to the chloride ion. Okay. So, Na plus and Cl minus, they form an ionic bond and thus salts and, the, and further they group into crystals. Second type of primary chemical adhesion is covalent bond. The formation of covalent bond takes place with the sharing of electrons between two atoms. There is no direct electron transfer between the atoms and thus resulting in the formation of a web-like structure. For example, diamond or graphite. After that, third type of primary chemical adhesion is the metallic bond. In the metallic bond, what happens is that a charged atom, a charged metal atom, it is moving freely in the ocean of electrons. Next, if we talk about the secondary type of chemical adhesion. Secondary adhesion is divided into two types. First is the hydrogen bond and second is the van der Waals forces. In the hydrogen bond, there is a weak electrostatic force and there is no direct transfer of electrons. Okay, So a weak electrostatic force, they connect or they uh, attract the molecules together but there is no direct transfer of electron. For example, in the formation of water molecule between hydrogen and any other atom. Example is the water molecule. Okay. Next are the van der Waals forces. So in the van der Waals forces, there is an interaction between a dipole which is created by any molecule. So dipole means a positive and a negative charged electrons. They come together, form a dipole. Now these, now this one dipole which is formed, it attracts another dipole. That is the van der Waals forces. Second could be mechanical retention or mechanical adhesion. So this is formed either by friction or mechanical interlock. Example in dentistry is amalgam or composite. Whereas for chemical or molecule level, molecular level uh, adhesion, the example is glass ionomer cements. So the uh, frictional or mechanical interlocking either it could be by the modification in the cavity, cavity design that can be done or there could be formation of certain micro tags in the enamel or dentine via which the mechanical bonding or mechan mechanical adhesion can take place. So this we will be discussing today. Okay, now after the tooth preparation, the restorative material is exposed to two different surfaces. 
one is the enamel and the second is the dentinal surface that we are exposed to so once we prepare the tooth enamel and dentine two different kind of surfaces we are exposed to right the bonding mechanism is different for both and in this video we'll be talking about the bonding mechanism of enamel so when we prepare a tooth and we cut the enamel a smooth surface is obtained let us uh, like zoom out in the enamel portion and see how it looks like so this is a zoomed view of the enamel surface these are the enamel rods this is the enamel matrix now it forms a smooth surface this smooth surface has a lesser amount of smear layer what is smear layer we'll be discussing in the coming videos now our aim is to convert this smooth surface okay into a rough surface so that certain tags are formed into which the composite resin can have a mechanical interlocking all right we have the smear layer and the enamel rods after the tooth preparation a smooth surface is obtained but our aim is to obtain a rough surface so how can we obtain a rough surface it is by the formation of macro tags and certain micro tags we must always remember that micro tags are very important for adhesion to occur because these micro tags they help in because see what happens is once these micro tags and macro tags are formed the surface area and the surface energy increases in the interface between the restorative material and the tooth surface ka jo interface hoga uski surface area aur surface energy increase ho jayegi because of which there is interlocking and mechanical adhesion of the composite so for the creation of rough surface we know that we must consider that the enamel it contains 90% of the hydroxyapatite crystals and 95 to 96% of it is mineralized so in order to create a rough surface converting uh, for a formation of the resin tags what we can do is demineralization with acid so in 1955 bonocor he introduced acid etching with 85% of the orthophosphoric acid for 60 seconds after that silverstone he observed that 30 to 40% of the phosphoric acid used for 15 to 30 seconds provided the similar results now presently 37% of phosphoric acid is preferred silverstone also found that if more than 50% of phosphoric acid was used then it could it was it uh, led to the formation of monocalcium phosphate monohydrate which formed which once formed prevent it prevented the further dissolution so a precipitate was formed there was excess uh, demineralization that occurred and it was easily removed from the surface if less than 20% of the phosphoric acid is used less than 27% of phosphoric acid is used then this leads to the formation of dicalcium phosphate dihydrate okay now this cannot be easily removed that is less amount of mineralization has taken place so the mineralization content is not easily removed because of which what happens is the resin tags are not properly formed and the interlocking or the adhesion is hindered we must also remember that in cases of primary teeth and in cases of fluorosis higher concentrations of the uh, this etchant can be uh, is used why because uh, in primary teeth a prism prismatic enamel rods are present because of uh, to remove these a prismatic enamel rods their uh, mineralized content is less organic content is more so we need a higher concentration of acid okay now there are different types of etching patterns which can be seen in enamel basically there are three types type 1 is the center of the is seen when the center of the prism is dissolved okay so this is the 
prismatic structure of the enamel rod if the center of the prisma is dissolved then the type 1 of etching pattern is seen which is the which leads to the appearance of honeycomb so honeycomb like appearance is seen when the type 1 etching pattern is found also sometimes what happens is the peripheral or the prism edges are dissolved this leads to the cobblestone appearance this is what it looks like here the periphery of this prismatic structure is dissolved third could be a combination of first or first and second type okay other type of prismatic structures other type of etching patterns are also seen such as flat or smooth etching pattern pitting et uh, pitting etching pattern now it is found that 15 to 25 percent megapascal of bond strength it is sufficient to resist the shrinkage next if you talk about the steps of how to etch the enamel to further facilitate bonding then first of all acid etching is done for 20 to 30 seconds each end is applied after that we need to rinse the tooth for 15 seconds and then we need to dry it for 5 seconds always remember we don't have to over dry the tooth we can just dry it either for 5 seconds with the help of three way syringe or we can dry it with the cotton pellet over drying of the tooth surface leads to the desiccation of dentine thereby decreasing the success of the restorative material now after drying if a contamination could occur if a contamination occurs either through saliva or through some other means then we need to repeat the same step same steps but for a lesser amount of time like we need to etch for 10 to 15 seconds rinse for 15 seconds and then dry again for 5 seconds so this is this is it about the adhesion and acid etching or enamel bonding in the next video we'll be discussing about the mechanism of bonding by dentine so do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel do hit the bell icon and also tell me in the comment section below if this video has helped you in any ways thank you keep visiting